Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the gathering. We're so glad that you are here with us. We've got a lot of things that are going on today. If you take a look at your weekly ringer, okay? Yes, that is not a mistake. There's only one page, okay? But one of the big things there is the barbecue tickets. What will happen uh, on this coming Friday for United Methodist Men, one of their big fundraisers. A lot of tickets have sold so far, um, but uh, we will... Um, there's still more left, and if you do not get yours and you still want some, come check with the office before uh, the next couple of days and make sure we still have some still left, okay? So that's the barbecue. Um, want to give you a couple of heads ups, all right? Uh, we have a couple of different presentations that are going to happen today. One of them is from the Gideons, okay? And at the end of the service, we will have a basket in the back and that will be able for you to uh, drop in. You got a brochure from the Gideons. If you'd like to help uh, be a part of that and, and donate to that, you have that opportunity to do that, okay? So just want to let you know all that, all right? Now, who has a joy this morning? And the crickets are hollering. Yes? The Lady Razorback softball team are playing for the regionals. Yes. And the men's baseball team tanked on the game. Yes, yes. Uh, you, you know, yeah, you, yes. You, you. My, my father was one that says you could beat anybody at any given day at any given time. And, and so, yeah, they, Arkansas's got, they, they didn't get stomped. They got the snot kicked out of them. I mean, they really did. Wow, 18 to 5. Woo. Yeah. Anybody else have a joy? Yes, ma'am. Well, yes, yes. Um, we got three and a half inches uh, in in uh, hot, hot springs in Diamond Head, and so yeah, it, it came down. It came down in a heartbeat. Um, it was. It was. Someone asked me. It says, "Why, why does God choose to make the storms happen at night?" And I, someone said, "Because that's the only good way you can see the lightning." <laughs> I thought that made perfect sense to me. So yeah, it, we'll go with that. Okay. Any other joys this morning? All right, all right. Yes, ma'am. All right, you got family coming. Yes, so excited. You know what? Uh, uh, Chauncey, who is our sound uh, guy from uh, the main uh, uh, service, the traditional service, uh, his uh, son and daughter and their two little ones. The little boy is probably two or three, uh, but there is a baby there. That baby cooed. I, I mean, you, it was funny to watch the congregation because every time that baby made a sound, it was like bird dog on quail. Every grandparent in a while, I've just said they turned. It was, it was kind of wild there. It really was. Well, one of the joys that we have, one of the great joys that we have, is we're going to bring, uh, they've already done all the, the official paperwork and stuff to bring, uh, to become new members of the church. All right, and so Tim and Mary Hobsgood, they are coming this morning to make that a public thing. All right, and we're going to. So I'm going to ask you two to stand. If you will open your bulletin, okay? Because the question that I asked them, and then they're going to respond back. You, you all are going to respond back to this, where the congregational response to reception of new members. We're going to say that together, okay? But the the question you already know the question, and, and you've already answered that. But will you? Support Christ of the Hills in your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and by your witness. All right, all right. And our response to that is this. We rejoice to recognize you as members of Christ's Holy Church and bid you welcome to the congregation of the United Methodist Church. With you, we renew our vows to uphold it by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that surrounded by steadfast love, you may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. I'm going to invite anybody who would like to come up with us. We're going to, I, I, my, my thing is this, I, Reverend Sig and I, we do things just a little bit differently um, because there's a lot of time constraints and things of that nature. Uh, but I think it's just very vital and important. And we're a little more intimate here uh, than we are in the, in the traditional services. But when you take a step of faith 
to do whatever in the church, whether it's a new ministry or that you join or anything like that, you are, in my eyes, by Satan, fresh meat, okay? Because if he can affect those that are coming in, then it trickles down. It really does. And so we, I want to have a time of prayer with them. And I invite you, uh, as children of God, if you want to come down, let's, let's pray together. All right. And for those that are still sitting there, would you please be in an attitude of prayer? Uh, they're going to touch your shoulders. I hope that's okay. That's all right. All right. All right. Didn't, I didn't ask that question earlier, so sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Almighty and gracious God, we know the power that you have, the strength that you have, the guidance. Father, it's by your spirit that you've moved. You have shared with this couple, Tim and Mary, and you have given them uh, such a blessing. I, I, I watched them as they've come into worship. I've watched them as they've done different activities. I have seen uh, who they are. They drink from their saucer because their cup overflows. And you have blessed them. And I ask, O oh Lord, that you would continue to bless them. Bless them in this ministry. Bless them in where you're leading them. Maybe it's a Bible study. Maybe it's some kind of a small uh, church group. Maybe it's something other than this. But Father, speak to them, talk with them, share with them. Lord, I pray that you will anoint them in this time. Father, I pray that you so saturate them with your Holy Spirit that when they walk out to their car today, they slosh when they walk. <laughs> so Lord, I pray for your holy presence with them. And we thank you for them. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right. Thank all right. You. <laughs> yeah, throw that Greek in there. I tell you what. <laughs> all right. Uh, one of our, our our great opportunities each year is the Gideons come in. Um, I, I I was so fortunate to be where I sit in the congregation because uh, the, the gentleman before uh, the first service uh, got a chance to tell some of the stats, and I'm hoping you're going to share some of those stats as well, uh, but the number of Bibles that have been given out uh, over the course of that ministry uh, is just astronomical, and their response was so beautiful. Uh, but we're going to have our Gideon representative come up and share his some thoughts. Thank you. I will do that. First, I got some information last night that I think you'll all be interested in. In the war-torn country of Ukraine, those poor people are suffering so much over there. There's over 2,000 Gideons in that country, and they've been helping in any way that they can. Of course, they're handing out scriptures, but they're also having prayer meetings, and there are people coming to Christ. Those poor people are desperate. They need its hope, and the greatest hope there is is Jesus Christ. And so that's that's a it was just such a great thing that I received that. Uh, you mentioned the success that we've had with the with the Bibles. It took 109, 114 years. I'm sorry, to uh, reach the first billion Bibles. It only took uh, 14 years to reach the second billion. And we're striving to reach the third billion. We're about halfway there in a short period, of, a shorter period of time. So the, we've had a, a, a lot of, and those Bibles aren't just Bibles. They represent Christ. Bibles mean souls. The Gideons were organized in the Dominican Republic in 1963. And there's been 15 million received Bibles since that time. The Gideons recently shared a testimony about a young lady whose name was Rochella. She grew up in a devout Catholic family, but she received a New Testament from a Gideon when she was a young girl. But her parents forbid her to bring that Bible into their house, so she secretly hid it outside, and her and her sister would frequently go out and read the scriptures together. At, um, she uh, had such a desire for the Lord that she became stronger than her fear of rejection from her family. 
So she accepted uh, Christ through that uh, Gideon Testament, which has the plan of salvation in the back, and became a Christian. Her family was offended by her decision, but her faith remained strong and her commitment to the Lord. And the transmission, the transition that they saw in her life, there were several other members of her family became Christians through that. And there's now, today, there's seven members of her family that are pastoring in the Dominican Republic. And those, that, those one Bibles, you never know what, what's going to happen with them. Isaiah 55, 11 assures us that God's word will not return empty or void. We are in almost 200 countries and territories around the world, and we have scriptures translated into 109 different languages. We pray that God will open up those borders of those countries that we're not into, and uh, he will do that. The mission of the Gideons, of course, is to win lost souls to a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. We do that through prayer. We do it through personal witnessing, using these New Testaments with the plan of salvation in the back, and, of course, distributing God's word here and around the world. You might ask, how can I help? Let me suggest four ways. Number one, pray for the Gideon ministry. Number two, consider becoming a Gideon or a wife of Gideon in the auxiliary. Or we also have uh, just friends of Gideon's that you can become a, a part of. And in those bulletins, if you picked one up out there, there is some out there. They will give all that information. The uh, third thing is uh, Gideon cards. We have beautiful Gideon cards of various, uh, for various occasions that you can send to someone and purchase Bibles in their name. There's a rack out in your foyer out there that has those cards in them for your use. And number four, of course, is to contribute to purchase Bibles. We have orders for millions of Bibles that we do not have the funds to supply. So many poor countries don't have the resources needed to supply those Bibles that are so badly needed there. That's why we partner with churches like yourself. But churches don't supply all those funds. In fact, we Gideons supply more than half of those funds for those Bibles that are so badly needed. We're just asking for a faith or a love offering. We certainly don't want any of your church monies. And all the money that you will give will only be used for purchasing and distributing Bibles. No overhead. If you need to make a check, please make it out to International uh, Gideon's International. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you, organist, or congregation, for letting me share about the Gideon ministry. God bless. Well, you can give God praise. Yeah, you can give God praise. Yeah, good, 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 good. Now, in, in just a little bit, we're going to take up our offering, our regular offering. Do not put any of the Gideon money in that, okay? Uh, we're going to reserve that. We've got a, a basket. One of these baskets will be back there on that back chair. As you leave, you can drop it in there at that time and use the, I think there's an envelope inside uh, that in the brochure part, you can, you can take a look at that, okay, if you would do that. Also, when you fill out the connection pads, make sure those go in the offering plate as we go around with that as well, okay? Um, one of the missions that we have is when we give a dollar offering. That dollar offering goes straight to missions, and, and this year, uh, or they've told me that uh, we are getting very, very close uh, to the half million dollar mark in our giving, and so that's great. But before we take up the offering, we have a special young man um, that, that don't shrug your shoulders and give your look to your dad, my goodness, yeah. Um, I'm going to have, Ben Romero has graduated, and he's, I, Iowa University, is that right? So, so Ben, come on up, and uh, I don't have the actual certificate, but here's Ben Romero, and, 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 and we, uh, the church uh, at Christ of the Hills has awarded him an $1,000 scholarship, okay? And so congratulations, Ben. All right, yeah. 
Yeah, so hi, my name is Ben Romero, and I just graduated from the Arkansas School for Mathematics, Sciences, and the Arts in Hot Springs. Um, for the past two years, I've gone there for high school, and now I'm planning to go to the University of Iowa to major in English with an emphasis on creative writing. And, <laughs> yeah, but so, <laughs> ah, um, <laughs> But so, yes, I would like to thank the gathering, mostly because I've been going here for so long. I don't remember the year my mom does, but I, I'm, that's right, yeah. Um, but so I would like to thank this church for providing me with the foundational morality and community that encourages me on my future guided by God. And throughout my time in high school, one event has remained a consistent presence in my life, which is this service. And it is through this president of spiritual consistency that I am able to confidently maneuver my actions and goals with passion and verve. And I would like to graciously thank this church for observing and caring for my college education with this scholarship, and so thank you. You're not going to add the last part of it? Okay, so the thing is, I said in the first service, I was like, yes, and I also um, take independently financed um, donations as well. But, <laughs> but no, but, but so I didn't, but didn't want to say it because my mom is just like, we don't want them to think that we're like mooching them for money. And I'm like, college is expensive, so... <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Give, get, yeah, congratulations. And, and I, I'm going to take this off, okay? Um, and I was, <laughs> I was trying to get Ben's attention. I'm going, you know, you could easily have worked the crowd between cookies and, you know, and coffee real easy, <laughs> but I couldn't get to him fast enough and stuff. But uh, we are, and I, I told him, I said, I've been here three years. And that's more words I've heard from Ben in my whole life. I'm like, that was awesome. That was awesome. Uh, and so, Ben, all the best to you. And, and if, if there's, and seriously, if there is something that you are in need, maybe of prayer or whatever, give us a shout and stuff. We would, we would hold you up, yes, very much so. Uh, so praise be to God. At this time, let us take up our tithes and offerings. We normally would have music, but that's okay. That's pretty good. Pretty good. I was um, reading a devotional by Billy Graham, and I loved, I loved what he said. He goes, we have to be in this world, but not of this world. He said, think of it this way. Your boat wants to be on the water, but you don't want the water in your boat. I thought that was a pretty good analogy. It really, it really worked out. Uh, in our time of prayer, we want to keep Shelly and, and Ron, uh, they're traveling. They were with uh, their, one of their grandkids for their graduation, and so just, just keep them in prayers for traveling mercies. Uh, we learned of one of our members, I'm not going to say the name, um, but she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, um, and so we, we hope that the, when they will give us permission, but all I can say is that we do know one of our parishioners uh, in, in our services uh, has been contracted with that. Um, and one, uh, on a very, very sad note, uh, we need to pray for a family. I don't know who the family is, but um, one of the parishioners came up to me and said this, uh, I think it was a young lady, um, she had just graduated from high school, and the very next day she was in a car accident and lost her life. Um, and so that, that time of transition um, and now with everything that was going on. So just keep that family in your prayers. Do you have a, do you have a name that you want to lift up in prayer? Yes. Liz Walker family. Okay. 
Kyle, Lulu, Guy Hobgood, and Craig Messmer. Okay. Bradley, Gigi, Sarah, Mitzi, did you have one? I saw you move. I'm, I'm sorry, I saw you move. I thought you had one. Never mind. The look on her face is saying, Don't, no, not me, not me. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Because some of you know that I'm like an auctioneer. As soon as I see you move, I'm going to call on you, but that's okay. That's all right. Um, tomorrow we have a memorial service uh, for Sally Crawford. And so uh, for Kelly Williams and the family, keep them in your prayers. Was there another one up here? Did someone? Yes. The Ukrainian people, yes. And correct me if I'm wrong, but did, I don't know if you caught the first speaker, but did he not say that 130,000 Bibles have been given to the refugees of Ukraine? Yeah, something, something like that. I thought that was, wow, what a, what, a, what a ministry. Any others? Well, then let's go before the Lord in prayer. Almighty and gracious God, we come to you and just say thank you so much for all that you do for us. Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ, for your Holy Spirit, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the rain that would you provided for us. You did it pretty dramatically, but you know, thank you. And Father, search our hearts. Search, search inside of us. Because every time we go to prayer, we should begin with thanks. We really should. So in our hearts, what, what would we lift up in thanks? We can get so saturated by all that which is bad or evil that is detrimental, all the different things that are going on. Sometimes it's not even worth reading the paper because all there is is bad news. But Lord, we need to say thank you. Thank you for being in our lives. Thank you for opening the word to us. Thank you for sharing with us. Father God, we ask that you, as you heard these prayer requests, that you would move divinely upon them. Help the families in grief. Help those who are con dealing with cancer or other ail ailments. Father, one of our prayers is this. That as we go about in this world, help us to reach people for Christ. It may start off as a smile. It may start off as a handshake. It may begin with talking about how the Razorbacks are doing. But somewhere down the line, if someone is thirsty enough and they see something in us, they're going to ask for a drink. Father, help us to provide that. Help us to share our stories. Lord, we just give you the praise and the honor. Thank you for this time together. And we pray together as you have taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you please rise for our opening song? Let's open our hearts, and let all our love for our God pour out.
may be seated if you'd like. I know for sure that the, our good Lord loves to hear our music, but I truly believe that most of all, he enjoys hearing us sing praises to him. So y'all help us sing now and let him know how great our God is. Sing with me. 
How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. Let's sing along with the next one, Waymaker, because God does make our way all the time. Our scripture comes out of the 14th chapter of the book of John, beginning in verse 23 and going to verse 29. In honor of the gospel, as you are able, would you please rise? And the holy word of God says this. Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own, but they belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled And do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe. This is the word of God for the children of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Will you share with me in an attitude of prayer? 
Almighty and gracious God, I pray that you will rescue me from me. Father, may I be allowed to be an instrument of your grace this morning. You place the word within me. Allow me to share your message, Lord. But Father, I ask for the power to do that, but I also ask when it comes to the idea of glory, Lord, you and only you get that. In that regard, make me nothing. And it's in your holy and precious name that I pray. Amen. There was a man one day that he started to figure out and understand who Jesus is in his life. That moment of where he's starting to inquire, starting to think, you know what, this Jesus may be uh, the right thing for me. And so Jesus knocks on his door one day. He opens it up and says, Jesus, what, what can I do? He says, I see that you have a room for rent. Can I stay here? He said, well, sure. And so he showed him into the guest bedroom and showed him where everything was, and there, there he was. And so some time had passed, and their interactions, their uh, eating together, all these different things that started building this relationship and stuff. And Jesus finally says, would it be a bother if I changed some things in this room? Oh, no, you've been here long enough. Sure, why don't you just go ahead and change it however you want to? He said, wonderful. So he started making changes, putting different things, all this stuff. And after a little bit while longer, Jesus went up to him and says, you know what? I love this house that you live in. I love it so much, I want to buy it. He said, would you let me buy it? Jesus, I... I really don't have any other place to go, and I really don't want to go anywhere. He said, no, 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 you can still reside in the house. I just want to live there. I want to own it. Would you give me everything? And he said, well, yeah, okay. And so as Jesus then took over the whole house and the time that had progressed, things that he had put in place in his house, those, those what we call the church sacred cows, you don't touch them, you don't talk about them, you don't even look at them. You remember? Yeah, yeah. And, and I've always told churches that if you have a sacred cow, sometimes we just need to have a divine barbecue. Okay? But anyhow, anyhow, they, he had these certain things that he put, and it was his handiwork on the side of the wall. It was his stuff outside, but Jesus started changing things over, and it started upsetting him. And finally, he said, okay, I planted this garden here, and he has tore it up and put some nasty pine trees here. I don't want them things here. So he finally said, Jesus, we got to have a talk. He said, what? What's, what? what's up? He said, you're changing everything. Changing everything that I believed in, changing everything that I tried, everything that I've done, everything that I've worked hard for, you are changing it. And Jesus reached into his lapel pocket and said, you want your deed back? Do you hear me, church? That's what happens in a relationship with Christ. It starts off innocent enough. We call it a vacation Bible school. It does. It does. And then if you get hooked into it, as a kid, when you get hooked into a Sunday school class and you've got 36 weeks of Moses, you know, yeah, you've got that, and the understanding of all of that. Because, man, we talked Moses to death. My goodness, my goodness. But somewhere along the line, you're going to have to say yes. And that's when Jesus takes ownership of the whole house. It's all about relationship. In the context, Jesus is teaching his disciples after having washed their feet and before his arrest. And he is, he's getting them ready for his absence here on this earth. And our passage where it comes in, in, in John 14, 15 through 21, repeats basically what we just read. It says the same thing, and, but in verse 15, Jesus makes it a command. Jesus is making the obedience a command. 
And Judas, and not the betrayer, if you read a little bit further up on this, Judas uh, came up to Jesus and asked the question. He says, how come you are going to show yourself to us but not the world? And so what we read now is the answer, to some degree, of Jesus' response to Judas, but not Iscariot, not the betrayer. In this passage, it's not a command per se, but it is a statement of the command. And so he says, to, to love me, to love Christ, is to obey my teachings. In 1 John 2, 24, he says, as for you, see that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. If it does, you, will, you also will remain in the Son and in the Father. And one of the best ways, and we learned this last week, one of the best ways that we learn and obey the teachings of Christ is to love one another. To love one another. You don't have to agree with everything someone says to them, but you are to love them. Brothers and sisters, the world needs to hear this. And in that response, the Father, father will love them. He will come to them and make their home with them. Isn't that a cool thought? Make their home with them. What an amazing promise. And then He will send the Holy Spirit. He will teach you all things. He will remind them of Christ's teachings. We are not in this alone. Never have been, nor will we ever be. You may feel alone, but you're not. And that's the Holy Spirit, the advocate. What that means in the Greek is to summon, call to one side, especially to one's aid, one who pleads another's cause, an intercessor. The Holy Spirit is more than a counselor and stronger than a comforter. The Holy Spirit will be upon them. And Jesus is that peace gifter. He gives us His peace. And it's a gift. What's the benefits of the gift? We don't have to worry. And we don't have to be afraid. Let me say that again. You don't have to worry. And you don't have to be afraid. When it goes back, you don't have to be worried. And you don't have to be afraid. But we miss that, don't we? We miss that sometimes. Now, the opposite of this coin, you see all the promises, all the great things of being connected with Christ and obeying Him and having a relationship. The other side of that is we don't obey Him because we don't love Him. What my baseball coach used to say, we're just going through the motions. You can tell a team that's going through the motions and one who's playing with their heart. I think Christ can do that too. And all these things we receive by obedience to Christ and remember and live out His teachings. All of this comes, and Jesus said, all of this is coming from my Father, my Father God. It's a relationship. He had a relationship with the Father. He had a relationship. And then John 7, 16 says this, Jesus answered, my teaching is not my own. It comes from the one who sent me. And now Jesus passes all of this down to us. Again, it's relationship. Well, Pastor, you're saying that over and over and over again. Yeah, and I'll stop when y'all get it. It's relationship. And I don't mean anything mean by that, but it's a relationship. It's a connection. It's coming to God. I, I remember the story about one guy saying, Pastor, I don't have a hard time praying. And the pastors looked at him and said, well, have you ever talked to a friend? He said, well, yeah, I've got lots of friends. He said, how do you do it? He said, well, we sit across from each other. He said, good, bring a chair up to you and talk to like if there's somebody in that chair. Well, that's the dumbest thing in the world. But he started that and gained a relationship with Christ because he could put it in his terms. Christ is sitting there. I can talk with him and we can share with one another. The end of that story is that he was in the hospital and his daughter was there and said, Honey, before you go down to get some uh, lunch at the, the cafeteria, would you pull this chair up next to the bed? And the daughter thought, Maybe he's got somebody coming over. I don't know. 
He said, okay, Dad, and he pulled the chair up there, and she went down to lunch. When she came back, he had passed away. With the chair facing him and his hand outstretched. It's relationship. It's not ritual. It's relationship. Rituals are great. Don't get me wrong. Oh, there's a great thing to say about rituals. But baptism is great, but it's not the method. It's the means behind it. I have had arguments with people. Oh, pastor, you got to dunk them. You got to get them saturated and wet in order for that baptism to take effect. My word. Is that what you're stuck on? It was the meaning behind the baptism. Because there's some folks that you can't immerse because for health reasons or what so what happens to them? No, it's the meaning behind it. Communion is just bread and juice unless there's that relationship that connects us with Christ and remembering the love that He has for us. Is it hard to recognize this relationship? Some relationships are problematic. Problematic, They are. Some relationships are problematic. In Campus Life in March of 1981, on page 31, this is the story. If you think, I love this, if you think your family has problems, consider the marriage mayhem created when 76-year-old Bill Baker of London recently wed Edna Harvey. She happened to be his granddaughter's husband's mother. That's where the confusion began, according to Baker's granddaughter, Lynn. She says, I quote, my mother-in-law is now my step-grandmother. My grandfather is now my stepfather-in-law. My mom is my sister-in-law, and my brother is my nephew. But even crazier than that, I'm now married to my uncle, and my own children are my cousins. <laughs> and from this experience, Lynn should ha- gain profound insight in the theory of relativity. You know how hard it was to type that? (laughs) My word. We know and see the promises of God to be in a relationship with Jesus. Why wouldn't someone want to be? Revelations 3.20 says this, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. See, if you've ever seen a picture of a painting of that passage of Scripture, you will see Jesus outside knocking on the door, but there's no handle there. We have to open the door. Do you hear me, church? It's relationship, not ritual. The relationship begins with us hearing his knock and desire to open the desire to open the door and let Christ in. But see, here's reasons why we, we don't get connected with people in relationships. Why? Because, number one, we have been trained and groomed that we don't need anyone but ourselves. We can do it by ourselves. I've seen little grandkids do that. I can do it. My son said that one time. I said, son, no, you cannot carry that can of paint out of the car at the age of three. But I can do it, Daddy. Y'all, y'all certain, don't, let me get to the punchline here first, folks, okay? You already understand what I'm saying. But when I turned around, he already had a hold of it and dropped it. And I was out with a hose cleaning the side of the car from latex paint. But we think we've, we've been trained this way. We, number two, we start to pursue this connection usually because we are at a low point. We start talking about Christ and thinking about that relationship when we are at the lowest part of our life. We've done everything. We've tried everything. And Jesus is sitting there going, I know you've tried everything. Try me. And he's been saying that for the longest time because he doesn't really, I, don't, I can't comprehend our Christ wanting us to get to the very lowest 
point of our life. But maybe that's what it takes. We finally sit there and go, wait a minute. I know who I have to connect with. It's relationship. Number three, as we have relationships with one another, there's a risk involved. Will I be accepted? What if they don't like me? Where will this go? Et cetera. Do we have to have that questions with Christ? Well, pastor, there's so many people that believe that they've got to be perfect before they come into the church. Brothers and sisters, it's kind of like a hospital. You don't have to be, be perfect. We're going to introduce you to the man who can make you perfect. Wait, 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 wait a minute. You mean I don't make another mistake? No, no. To be perfect, to move on to perfection, is to love the Lord your God with everything that you have and to love your neighbor as yourself. When we have reached that, we have reached perfection. But pastor, that's impossible. But what if we tried and never stopped trying? Oh, what a world this would be. We don't understand the kind of relationship we're getting into. It happens with one another today. Possible fear is involved. If you have been hurt once, you, you walk with caution. Or friendship and relationship mean different things in today's time. We may be connected technologically, but not in closeness. Are really the 1,325 friends you have on social media really your friends? So what does this mean if we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and we have this relationship? We lack understanding of this relationship and what it means to have such an advocate called the Holy Spirit. And see, at this point, I hear my dad. I hear my dad. Every time that we opened something that had instructions on it and we got to a point where we were putting it together and we stopped, I don't know where to go from here. My dad would say, read the directions. Read the directions. Pastor Steve, how in the world do we get to know the Holy Spirit? How do we know this Jesus Christ? How do we understand the Father? Read the directions. And I hear my Father behind me right now. You know what the Bible stands for? Basic instructions before leaving earth. <laughs> I was talking with somebody and, and said, Pastor Steve, they, they go, have you seen the passion of the Christ? I said, no. I own it, but I've never seen it. Are you kidding me? I said, I read the book. <laughs> I like when Laura laughs in the very back. It's kind of cool. <laughs> you can't see her face, but she's laughing hysterically. I love that. And when it talks about reading the instructions, study it. Don't just read it. Romans 10.9 says... If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Relationship. Our fear may be the same as the opening illustration, fear of change. We hate to change and Christ wants to move you to be more like him. And Paul shows it that we are to be imitators of Christ. Ephesians 5, 1 through 2. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Brothers and sisters, that's relationship. We need to connect people to Christ. Joe E. Troll, Troll writes this. He says, we can live only in relationships. We need each other. A rather crude and cruel experiment was carried out by Emperor Frederick, who ruled the Roman Empire in the 13th century. He wanted to know what man's original language was, Hebrew, Greek, or Latin. He decided to isolate a few infants from the sound of the human voice. He reasoned that they would eventually speak the natural tongue of man. Wet nurses who were sworn to absolute silence were obtained, and though it was difficult for them, they abided by the rule. The infants never heard a word, not a sound from a human voice, and within several months they were all dead. We need each other and we need Christ. Thing is, we don't know the fullness of the possibility. Brothers and sisters, we barely scratched the surface on this. 
If we go back to Judas's question, those who love Jesus will continue to see him even though he is with the Father in the home that the divine make with them and in the work of the Spirit to call to mind everything that Jesus taught and their ongoing experience of peace that comes from him and not from the world. Jesus said, you will be glad that I am going to the Father. And I thought, man, that's strange. They were with him for three years. Why would they be glad? Because when he went to the Father, it had completed the task that he needed to complete. He was going to go to the cross. Salvation was coming. For him to go was for us to be saved. But he gave us an advocate. Jesus tells them ahead of time so that they can believe. It's all about the relationship. So let me ask you a question. How is it with your relationship with Christ? Now, many people, when you ask that question, they go, well, okay. I go to church. I'm on six different committees. I made cookies last Sunday. They all ate them. No. Is Jesus Lord of your life, every bit of your life? Relationship. Relationship. How is it with your relationship with Jesus? Bless you. That's the question. Well, Pastor, what is the... I don't need to hear the answer. I want you to tell that with God. Lord, if my relationship with you is not where I want it to be, then let us change it. The last part of the footprints in the sand, if you've ever... There's two parts. The first part, a lot of people know. The second part, not so many people know. But the gentleman was looking out to his life, and he saw the set of footprints. He saw two sets, and when he first got connected with Christ, they were here, and his set and Jesus' set, and then they, as he was walking with Christ, they started getting closer and closer and closer. And before too long, he said, uh, he said Christ, uh, Jesus... Uh, is my relationship with you getting so connected that I am starting to walk on your foot impressions? And he said, yes. He said, I go down further in life and I, I, I gave more and more. You are Lord of everything. And my footprint is almost exactly on top of you. Does that mean that I'm getting closer and closer to you? He said, yes. He said, but at the end of it, Lord, I don't understand. There is all these footprints all over the place. He said, my child, my child. That's when we got so close that we danced. How is your relationship with Christ? Will you bow your heads with me? Almighty and gracious God, oh, help our relationships. Help our relationships. I think that's the reason why it's some folks don't come into church because they think that they've got to jump some hoops and do these different... Lord, we just want to get them connected with you. To see where you want to lead them. To have their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That they may know the full blessing of that relationship. Father, may it be so. It's in your holy and precious name that we pray. Amen and amen. Would you please rise and let us sing our closing song? First of all, I'd like to say thank you to Keith and Karen for helping us out this week. We appreciate it very much. Thank you, Jay.
Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong out of this place thinking that you're not loved by God. He loves you more and more and more and more. 
He loves you and there's not a thing you can do about it. Before I give the benediction, I want to just remind you, the Gideon's basket will be out there, right, right, right back there, all right? And if you are able to donate, please donate. That's great. But we receive this benediction. God has given you the power of the Holy Spirit. He has given you His grace, His mercy, and His peace. Go with that, dear children. Go with that and share the love of Christ with this world. Go in His grace. Amen. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign for.